Hello, Internet! My name is Heikola, and today we will be talking about the difference between performance art and modern art and trying to dissect why people conflate the two. We will also address why bad art isn't really a thing. And before we start, I would like to address the shift in content. I usually make short animatics and post them to this channel. Here are some of my non-animatic works. A little bit of credit for myself, and not much. Little side note that's not in the script. If you see me looking a bit over here, uh, that is where my script is. Please ignore that. I also feel really uncomfortable when content creators look dead into the camera and just go. The reason I decided to make this video is because I've been seeing multiple accounts of people not only making wild statements about multiple creators' art, but also calling performance art modern art. One last thing to note is I personally do not enjoy the process of creating either modern art or performance art, but I have an unlimited amount of love for all art forms, even art that is considered bad by the collective. What is the definition of performance art? Merriam-Webster defines performance art as a time-based art form that typically features a live presentation to an audience or to onlookers and draws on such arts as acting, poetry, music, dance, and painting. It is generally an event rather than an artifact, by nature ephemeral, though it is often recorded on video and by means of still photography. I am now going to play a few videos of what I believe performance art to be. Keep in mind that art is an ever-changing medium, and what I believe performance art to be, another person may believe is to be something else. I also believe that all of the pieces I collected for this video don't just have one category they fit under. Roman Singer's Countdown comprises of 10 buckets full of stands stacked on top of one another. The performance begins as Singer's pokes a hole in the bottom bucket, letting the sand start to fall out onto the floor. The audience is left to wait in suspense. After a few seconds, all of the buckets and the sand they contain fall. It comes crashing to the floor as the sand spills onto the clean gallery floor. Throughout all of my research, I could not find the artist's original intent with this piece. But my interpretation is that something small, represented by the cut in the bucket, could be the start to the downfall of either the person's well-being or to humanity itself. I apologize if I say these names incorrectly. Sun Yuen and Peng Yu's piece entitled Can't Help Myself depicts a robot arm that pivots around and pulls the red liquid towards itself. This piece has an awfully human aspect to it. Back in 2022, when I had first glanced at this piece, my interpretation of it was that we, the human race, can't help but keep chugging along in life, and despite our constant efforts to hold ourselves together, we all eventually have to die. The artist's message for this piece was, of course, different. As stated by Gingingham.org, Sun Yuen and Peng Yu are known for using dark humor to address conscientious topics. And the robot's endless, repetitive dance presents an absurd Sisyphean view of contemporary issues surrounding migration and sovereignty. However, the bloodstain-like marks that accumulate around it evoke the violence that results from surveilling and guarding border zones. Such visceral associations call attention to the consequences of authoritarianism guided by a certain political agendas that seek to draw more borders between places and cultures, and to the increasing use of technology to monitor our environment.
Roman Singer's piece Two Kayak was a part of an exhibit called Four Kayaks. The exhibit as described by sorry if I pronounce this wrong, Hazerler, it's up on screen, Contemporary.com had often explosive actions that incorporate the element forces of fire, water, air, and earth. More often than not, photographs and films are the only records we have that survived these ephemeral events conducted both with and without an audience. There is a saying, not all art has meaning. And I believe this to be incredibly inaccurate. Not all art is made with a meaning, is better, I would say. We interpret things differently, and I saw this and immediately thought about how navigating through life can be tough, and you don't always have a straight path to follow. The point. Now that we covered all the pieces and their meanings, I can finally get to my point. All the pieces I showcased have a performance aspect to them. They also have multiple videos saying that modern art is less than other art despite the fact that it is performance art. But what I just said isn't fully true. For some reason, people seem to enjoy I Can't Help Myself. And while I do too, we must admit it's hypocritical. Calling Roman Singer's piece stupid or implying that it is less than, but praising Sun Yon's and Peng Yu's work is counterproductive. On a similar note, I didn't include the video I'm about to play in the segment above because I can't find the artist's name anywhere or a statement by them. I don't want to show any piece without giving them credit, but I have seen so many people bash on this piece called The Sound of Butter. So here it is. How about we hear a good piece of review? The creator, and I apologize if I say this wrong, Baro Santo made a video about the sound of butter, and I think he has a very similar opinion to what I do. The funniest thing to me about these videos and like the reactions they get are so visceral. There's so many of them that are like, oh, this isn't real art. This is a disgrace. This is just talentless people trying to pretend they have talent. And like, damn, if it invoked that much emotion, that much, that kind of a reaction from you, it's doing its job. Like, I get it, it's not all gonna be Picassos and fucking Rembrandts, but that is literally the point of art. Art can be ugly, art can be horrendous, art can be just downright stupid, but at the end of the day, it's still art. So what is modern art, if not that? Penn Art and Sciences University of Pennsylvania describes modern art as on a basic level, modern art describes the period roughly from the 19th century to the 1960s. It tends to include art made in Europe and North America, but was obviously a global phenomenon. The isms most people are familiar with, Impressionism, Post-Imperialism, Cubism, Dada, Surrealism, and so forth, are subsets of modernism. On a more conceptual level, modern art or modernism implies a particular mindset and a particular practice, a willingness to double down on the category of art itself, to question it, to interrogate it, to be particularly self-aware about the concept of art and the various practices of art making. In that sense, modernism is a willingness to experiment, to take things to the extreme, to push boundaries, to break existing rules and protocols. But you're probably thinking, Heikala, doesn't that sound like some of the examples you use today? And my dear viewer, yes. Yes, I do. I know that it sounds like that contradicts itself, but it doesn't. At any point in this video, did I say or imply saying that this is not modern art? No. Actually, editing Heikala, can you put in the clip where I say art has multiple categories? I also believe that all of the pieces I collected for this video don't just have one category they fit under. What is a good example of modern art? One of my favorite pieces of art in general is called Take the Money and Run by Jens Henging. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Here is the person, by the way. Hengings was approached by the Kenston Museum of Modern Art to, quote, reproduce two of his earlier pieces in which he represents the annual wages of Australian and Danish workers by framing piles of kroner and euro bills. Sorry if I said that word wrong. 
They offered him 84,000 USD in cash. After he turned in the blank canvases, the museum demanded that Henning return the money. In response, Henning says, this is only a piece of art if I don't return the money. So what does this all mean? I believe that in the videos I showed, they have a main category of performance art with subcategories that explain more about the piece. Think of it like a candle. Candles have their main fragrance notes like citrus. Then they have a secondary note like rose and then base notes like vanilla. Just like candles, art can be multiple things at once. I think some of the quote unquote secondary notes for I Can't Help Myself by Sun Yun and Peng Yu is kinetic art, contemporary art, and actionism. And as for Rowan Singer's art, the subcategories are modern art and action sculpture. Finally, the last segment of the video, I'm almost done. Why so much hate? Throughout this whole video, I've shown countless videos of people hating performance art, whether they knew it was or not. So why do people think it's bad? Well, the main thing I kept seeing was people saying that they could do it themselves. And yes, maybe you could. Or maybe it was harder than you actually thought. But either way, the people who are saying that wouldn't like what they were making. And in my mind, that's what makes art, not art. I also think people conflate the fact that just because they hate the art doesn't mean factually it is bad art. There's one last place I think it comes from, the inability to accept new or strange things in the modern world. See what I did there? But puns aside, society's inability to change has a drastically large impact on what makes art art. And to any of my young audience out there, specifically my young artists, if you're struggling to make something you are proud of, don't stop drawing or writing or singing or dancing just because someone doesn't like what you create. Your art is for you and for no one else to judge. Granted, don't get me wrong, seeking out constructive criticism is one of the best ways to improve your art. Just don't listen to any of the negative slash deconstructive criticism that comes your way. And remember, that's just a theory. An art theory. Thanks for watching. Did anyone get that reference?